Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gonna do it how you want. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad. Well, go on. Hey, man, it's a beautiful day, man. Another day. Yes, sir. Man, blessed God, to be God, here. Man, God, keep on blessing us, man. Bless, bless, bless. Say, man, we here, man. And guess what? We got that heat today, man. Say, man, we got the hey new, new, creative. Austin Grant is in the building. What's going on, man? What's good? What's good? How are y'all? Hey, man. I say new and creative, so we're going to get right into it. Because his videos are fly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the but video, the one, one that we seen. before we go into the music and the video, let's go, let's go yeah, back. Yeah, we're going to do the back story, let's go man. Back. We got to get the back. We got to get Way the dirt. Back. Let's get the dirt. He got yeah, dirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There. Say, man. Uh, uh, so, Austin, who is Austin Grant? Is, are you from Dallas? Yeah. Man. Born Dallas. and raised. Born and raised. Triple D. I am a you don't even know boy. The, you don't even know the sign. Triple D. Hey! <laughs> of course. Yeah. No, I'm actually from, uh, like, Rowlett, but I Rowlett? grew up uh, playing basketball, and my dad uh, started AAU basketball in Dallas. Wow. So, like, Your he dad started, started Team Texas. Uh, really? Yeah, that's who I played for. And uh, Were you any good? I was number one player in Texas. If you go wow. my... Uh, Baller's Life has like 500,000 views uh -huh. yeah. in, but it's Austin Grand Staff is my last name Austin Grand Staff yeah because a lot of time when I That's um, on YouTube when I put in Austin Grand it, it shows you race cars yeah if you type so. in staff though it's a whole different <laughs> it's world it's a whole different yeah. world oh, okay and okay. Uh, I played at Ohio State um I played basketball since I was like five. No NBA drafts? Uh, that's where I started making music uh, my sophomore year of college I went to Ohio State and then I transferred over to Oklahoma because I wanted to be closer to home. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, somebody showed me recording and stuff and I just got, became obsessed. Like I couldn't balance both. And then okay. it was like four more years of that trying to figure out. I went to DePaul University in Chicago, played there. And it was still like, my mind was, Confused. I was a little lost. Like, right. and I have a six year old son right now and he was back home mm. and so, that was also on my mind all the time. And the only way I felt like I could get through all that stuff was through music. Can we cuss on here? I'm, I'm not going to trip. You you know, just, I mean, keep it tasteful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I, mean, don't, I mean, don't cut up too bad. But. So how did your parents feel about you um, leaving the basketball, especially since your dad, you know, was in that field, to pursue music? It wasn't great at first and the music wasn't good either at first like I made a lot of bad music and I was in my dorm room but you couldn't tell me it was bad at first like at that <laughs> exactly. time I thought it was fire I tell everybody to come through here like dude nobody comes in here and say man I make my music is horrible everybody says my music is great but, it don't matter what stage they're at or nothing mm -hmm. so I have to be a buffer I have to pick which mm -hmm. who I can bring in right yeah I went through that like probably like the last year to the last year and a half I've felt confident like every time I make a song I think it, every time I do anything musically it's going to be good wow back then I just didn't I was just watching YouTube videos how to how to mix this how to do that how to make beats and it it just became an obsession and it really was uh all through basketball like my work ethic came from basketball mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. just applied that to music and it took a while for people to accept it but Thank God I have like good parents and good people. So because sports do instill discipline in people, um, because those early morning training. I mean, listening to someone, taking orders, <laughs> really, mm -hmm. and then not slacking. Because there's times when in sports, especially in basketball, you want to slap because you're just not feeling it today. You don't feel like running. You don't feel like doing this, and the coach is on you. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I love about coaches is that even when you don't at an earlier stage when you don't see your talent sometimes they can see the talent in you right. and they try their best to pull it out but 100 they have to convince you mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and me for, it was just kind of like i was five years old my dad was coaching 17 year old aau teams mm -hmm. and we they would all come stay at our house so i was just constantly around like older kids and my dad didn't let me play basketball in rockwall he took me to the uh more than YMCA and why I don't he he didn't want me were they with, not as good no they were I was the only white kid in the whole league when I went out there and yeah. when I was at home playing it was just 
he knew what basketball i'm not going to be <laughs> playing against these kids in the suburbs if yeah. i'm going to be yeah so i get it but that really instilled like another like toughness and that's just kind of yeah. i've grown up in a different way than like my friends have that i go to school with like i just aau basketball has helped me I don't know, in so many ways. Just Do you connect. ever look back on your life and, and be like, well, I should have pursued basketball more? Um, you think you would have been? In college, yes. I think that I was, in high school, I had my people around me who were making sure I wasn't slipping up and stuff. And mm -hmm. When you get off by yourself in college, especially a school like Ohio State, you're... It's party central. Oh, college man. is always as party central. <sighs> And so I got lost in that, and that was a lot more fun than having to wake up at 5 a.m. to go lift weights. Yeah. And trying to balance those things, it was just a different world, and I didn't adjust well to that. If yeah. I could go back, yes, I would have. Because in high school, I, I felt like I loved basketball. Like, it was everything to me. But when I got to college, it felt like I had to do it all the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. and it was just One thing I always say in life, as I got older, I realized I don't ever wish to go back. I always say everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Um, there, God has a bigger plan for us down the line that we might not know what it is. Mm -hmm. But as long as we keep going with what is handed to us, we will eventually right. find it out. But with the regrets that you have or with the things that you're thinking or you just said, use that to educate and help other kids. My, you know? my son. Right, mm -hmm. who, he's a, at a young age, but I'm talking even teenagers yeah. or people who are in college who is in what you were in. Right. And you're able to say, well, I was there and mm -hmm. this is how I feel now. So I feel that you should, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah, well really, <laughs> Unless the only way I got through it was through making music. And I don't think that like, I think a lot of people in college sports, like they have this, they're going, I thought I was going one year, then I was going to go to the NBA. I was, mm -hmm. a, I was a Jordan brand, all American, like average 30 points in high school. Every it was all easy. Kid, every kid feel and like, cause just like um, football players, they think that, okay, once I, even high school, they think I'm just going to get drafted mm -hmm. straight to. Well, so people are telling you too. Everyone's telling you. Even the even the coaches that you're going to school, they're, they're telling you they're going to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And then you get there, and it's not all sunshine and rainbows, like mm -hmm. at all. It's you have the older kids who don't want you to come in and just a little take freshman to take spot. their spot, and it's, it's just a lot. Yeah, and so I went from high school where I didn't really feel like I had to compete in practices, and I could just coast and get by. You go there, people are trying to rip your head off every day. It's What's the relationship you have with your dad? Because even then, <laughs> when I think about it, and you're in college and you're going through this, because um, most people drift away, because when you're on your own, mm -hmm. you don't hardly ever call your parents, you don't ha hardly yeah. ever, because you're happy to be on your own, no rules, no this, right. no that. So, but what I was thinking is like, because he's been in that, in that career, so easily could pick up the phone and say, hey, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, well, help keep me on a straight and narrow. I think that uh, me and my dad's relationship, ha it's had ups and downs, especially through that college time. And right mm -hmm. now, I, I feel like we're closer than we ever have. It's like he's really getting to know me. Okay. And like, not just, he's not a coach. He's mm -hmm. my like best friend. So like oh, it's awesome. something, but we've had times like throughout college where he wouldn't really want to talk to me because I wasn't like, my love and burning passion for basketball just wasn't there anymore. Right. And, that's the only kid that he, that's the kid he knew was the kid with the burning love for basketball. So and that's what he wanted for you too. Yeah. And I, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard like to accept that your son doesn't want to really play basketball and wants to make music. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody told me like, I'm the real life Troy Bolton from High School Musical. <laughs> like, it's kind of funny, but uh, it's good now. Uh, but back then I felt like I didn't want to call him and talk to him about it because right. I didn't want to let him down and I didn't want him to worry about me. I understand totally. Well, I, I understand as well. And uh, people sometimes, they try to push their dreams on you. I you thought know, about parents, that too. They do that a lot. So uh, big ups to you for not letting that happen. You know, um, a lot of times people try to live their dreams through their kids. And I, I mean, I'm watching my kid play right now and I'm like, I see how or why. Like, it's, it, could, it, it is, a, it, you feel like you're out there playing. Like, mm -hmm. it is crazy. I would say that he, I naturally didn't even have like, any, I didn't show any signs that I wasn't going to be a basketball player until I got to college. And that college time, like I, whew, we've had so many times where we've yelled at each other on the phone about it. And 
now like he I heard him on the phone yesterday with somebody and they were like how's Austin's music going and he's like oh he's about to blow up and I'm like what the fuck dad yeah man and wow like you've came a long man. way that's dope but you yeah. know what I hate about stuff like that though and um, I can be talking from experience as well is that and we as parents and cause you're a parent right mm -hmm. now too is the fact that we will say all of these things to other people but not say it to a child yeah. so you had to he overhear him saying something like that you know what I right. mean it's, so, it's more of like, he's very... I don't know why, we do, why, why parents don't right. do that. Like tell your, son, like your kid that you're I'm like proud of you. Actively, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's just that, that father and son deal and mother and daughter deal. And I think it not only happen, it happens in all cultures. But we man. need to break that, But it's though. still something that happens. I've seen it uh, more so me and my father had those type of issues mm -hmm. where we couldn't communicate because of... Usually it's fear taxes that was used early on or something like that for my case. But another one could be, you know, the lack of communication between Austin Grant and his father because of the, his father and his grandfather. So it could be something like that. There's always right, like my dad came from his dad was a drug dealer. And See? Mm -hmm. Bad, See bad, what I mean? bad person. So that's going to miss. That's gonna but my dad, like if you take from what my dad came from and what kind of dad he is. I would say he's an overbearing parent. I, I tell him that, and that is a good, I would take that over what his dad was. Exactly. 10 but, times. Because he overcompensates for what yeah. his dad but, was. And my mom's soft, sweet. I can go talk to her about anything. So like, really, I'm blessed. <laughs> Correct. But I still say that, even with that being said, being that you just uh, disclosed that, um, you got to think about what, what he just said, his dad dad was a drug dealer so it's a lot of his things. grandfather correct a lot of things he wouldn't talk to his son mm -hmm. about so that would cause communication dysfunctionalities mm -hmm. and that's how you can end up with an austin grand not being able to talk with his father like normal normal normalcy the, uh, i had to i went through a place where i couldn't even tell my dad i love him it wasn't something that we done because his dad never done it so at a time now i tell my sons hey i love you constantly because mm -hmm. I know that I broke that cycle. Right. And I, I feel good about it. You know what I mean? It feels yeah. good to be able to say, I did something my granddad right. and my father couldn't couldn't accomplish. And I love the fact that you said crazy. that your dad is more That's like crazy. your best friend right now yeah. because your son being six and him seeing that relationship between you and your dad. I was just about to say, dad, about me and my son, I'm like the, like, his life isn't all like family oriented. Like, I'm not married to his mom and anything right. like that. So it's Are y'all still together? No. There's okay. still like things that, are bad in his this life function, but when right. i say like i let him do whatever he wants to do i let, like he wants to play fortnite we're playing fortnite anything he wants to i want him to be able to find that and do what he wants and be a kid because i do see like usually a lot of these people who are in the nba didn't start playing basketball till they're like 10 yeah. 9 10 or 11 yeah. because they're that's like they don't get burnt out like that's a that's a hard sport to play for so long and it's more of like i want my son to be happy and he sees me like when they filled out something at school they're like what does your dad do he's like my dad's superpower power is he writes songs <laughs> like my dad's Aww. a rock star and so oh, like really? now all his pictures he does this hey. that's what i do in my pictures hey. I'm like, i don't know it's so, just crazy so you, you I, I met machine gun kelly you giving me that feel when i look at you uh, bro yeah Everyone's i'm okay. telling you I, I met him i met him at the palms hotel we was checking in together he's dope and uh we talked for a brief minute i don't even remember what i said to him I remember what I said to Nipsey, but I don't, and we met. I met Nipsey in the same place I met mm -hmm. Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly's and changed his music a lot. I do mm -hmm. not know what the hell I said to him, <laughs> but we talked. Yeah, but I don't know what it, it, it couldn't have been that deep. It might have been me complaining about the line. I don't. Know. <laughs> but we was talking, and 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 I didn't even bring up music. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't even. I, I just know. So damn, this Machine Gun. Kelly. He's from Cleveland, I think, from Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely met him, and um, he's dope. So, but are you an only child? No, I have a little brother and an older sister. Okay. Uh, my older sister, there. That's my little brother's in England right now, backpacking through England with his friend. Nope. He for hiking. the summer. He's hiking. Yeah. How yeah. old is he? He's twenty-one. Did he play basketball? At twenty-one. Yeah, he was okay. pretty good too. He was. Uh, Who's he was, better, you or him? I mean, me. Of course, <laughs> you said he was the best in Texas. Yeah, man. my, my well, brother though could shoot it. Or did you go? I was the number like forty. Coming to out of high school. Yeah. Is he tall as well? Yeah, he's like 6'3". Okay. He was a shooter, though, and he, uh, he I felt bad for him when he was younger because he was chubby. He was bigger, and I was just this athlete, and I was like, gosh, my brother's not going to reach. Like, they're going to expect him to be this and that. And he they lost that weight, and he got while. good, and I was yeah. like, yes, thank God. <laughs> no, he's, <laughs> yeah. still, he's still hiking, so he's probably yeah. looking real good. Yeah, that's he's, good. That's, Does he love music as well? 
Uh, not like me. He okay. uh, he's all about his money. Like oh, awesome. he insur- he just did an insurance adjusting thing, like where he worked for State Farm, and he got paid like a lot. A good neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> State Farm is there. <laughs> hey there, yeah. I tell you, that's the way boss talk gonna be. We like a good neighbor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boss talk is there. You know so, what I'm <laughs> when did you actually write your first song? Because I know you said when you found your love for it, but when did you write your first? When I was probably eight or nine, I had this song called. Uh, sexy eyes that um do you still remember it it was like let me see those sexy eyes in the city of angels and then i could never like get a word to rhyme with angels (laughs) (laughs) when i was little and so we would just sit there and think me and my friends and then now i'm like that's all i do is just sit there and think of hooks and verses and it's my mom's like i remember when you were little you used to do that all the time really (laughs) that's what you remember yeah that's dope yeah it's so, crazy yeah yeah so you didn't see yourself being where you at right now you didn't mm-hmm. know you what you you think an nba there for a minute yeah yeah yeah. yeah. it's a, a okay. dumb jock that's where i come in hey check it man <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he good right there i think he good I'm right comfy there. yeah check it man so hey man so do you think that um if you uh so did you just because I, I i missed a little bit of it but did you actually just leave basketball no injuries or anything or did you have a torn acl and then that's when you no i really just worked my way down like i <laughs> didn't pay a dime for college and i have a degree i okay. finished at A&M commerce mm-hmm. okay that's where i transferred last because my son was How here are you? i'm 25. so you got a you full rise scholarship you should have been rocking out with uh uh with uh he should have been rocking out with Sergeant J. Uh, but they didn't go to that A&M. I think he commerce. was at Commerce. Mm. I think they were, because that girl, Apoka, mm-hmm. she was there too. Yeah, she was there, I remember so, that. Uh, and also, and, and uh, I think Sergeant M was down there at, mm-hmm. at Commerce. That's where I had my dorm room. They did room. music, was you doing music down there? I was, I was, but like, nobody really knew n- like my roommate and my teammates knew, and they, I wasn't dropping though. I was in my dorm, I have like two albums that I've recorded in that dorm room in okay. commerce that like that was honestly i wish i i liked it there because i could lock in wow. no one would bother me and That's my crazy. name was ag303 i think well, was I my like name say sergeant j was uh down there i'm pretty sure and they mm-hmm. did bus it and that sounds that. really familiar i'm telling yeah. you they came they would come i don't know and y'all are all about the same age they may be a little bit younger than you mm-hmm. maybe but it's not it, it's crazy that that's a crazy talent Who, yeah. how old were you when you were there i was uh probably like 20 it was like 22 that's, that's 20, that era mm-hmm, mm-hmm. probably 23 ish i was Maybe. older yeah you was older than, but yeah. i was really in a rock wall majority of the time because i oh. never really drive back and forth yeah because my son was here yeah and it was a 45 minute drive so i would always come back and hang out with my son and uh i didn't go to my first like real studio till after i graduated and it was audio heaven where I met Pistol or Christopher Gibson. Shout out Pistol, Christopher Gibson, man. Come, what come holler at me at Boss together? Talk when you get a chance. Let go. It's my big bro. What was that? What song did y'all do together? Me and Pistol? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot. We did this song called Tightrope that uh, is going to be on my album. And it was really when I think I kind of stepped into a, like, I leveled up with that song. I found my sound, which is like this explosive sound. Like, that's mm-hmm. the sound that people were liking. And Pistol really believed in me, and he had me engineering people up there, and I was running sessions for him, and recording for free. Like he was, he was really looking out. He believed in me. That was the first person he introduced me to Keys, uh, who's been like my right hand man now since I met him, and we've kind of built this whole thing, and we're just a lot of music, and then just been working my way up. So it's yeah. It's you a said tightrope. What is tightrope about? A psycho female that <laughs> I act like I don't like, like but I do like it. Like, I'm complaining all the time, but it's like, that's the shit I like, though. I that's like, that's though. how it go? It's like, I've been living life, though, walking on a tightrope, in denial, the shawty is a psycho, but that's the shit I like, though. Yeah, man. I like, though. Yeah, yeah, man, that's it's what I'm dope. talking about, man. That's dope. It's like a reggae you know, vibe yeah. beat too. So. Yeah, don't say reggae. You know, you know, <laughs> she, she she Jamaican, so she she I don't know. Is that, what, did it seem like a, like that type? You have to hear the it's song. It's cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the beat. The, the beat. beat. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, I'm yeah, listening to the way how you saying it, so the I can riffs. imagine like a little yeah. beat to man, it. Man, you guys are dope. I've had some dope people come through this platform, man. You know, I love it, man. It's it's crazy, man. So, do you think that? Uh, do you do you feel like 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 you where you where you supposed to be right now at this moment? Yeah, I do. Okay, I feel like I uh, I told who was I told one of my friends the other day. I was like, 
I feel like I'm in this stage where I'm just waiting, like, for life to really change. And because it's there's just to too much stuff going on right now. And I'm not planning on all these things working out. Mm-hmm. But if one of them works, like, it's just, I try not to be too high or too low. I just try to be in the middle and, and prepare for the moment. And I know that, like, this is what I'm made to do. I can touch much more people with music than I ever could with basketball. Exactly. That's what I love because we've been having so many musicians coming through here. And I I have now realized the power of the mic, Mm. the power of what you write and how many people, not only kids, but older people who listen to this, jam it out in their cars and it can change their mood. Mm -hmm. It can because people can resonate Mm. with whatever you just went through. Because most of the things you write is something that you experience yourself, yes. right? Yes. And you don't only write about breakups or if girls. What are some of the other to- other topics that you write about? Um, of course, strippers. <laughs> okay. Females yeah, in man. general. Yeah, um, big booty. I like to tell people all of them. Yeah. When I make a song, I either want them to dance or I want them to cry or I want them to f- change their mood, like you said. Like so you want them to dance. I, I like. Like I have a lot of songs that are um, hip hop songs. Uh, I'm like talking about strippers and stuff. That's dope. And you have any feel good ones? Yeah. One that will make somebody like really feel like they could have a down day mm-hmm. and they hear your song and she like, wanna hear Man. She wanna hear something like that cause yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I wanna happy. hear it. Crap alone. Not that you. one, but. See, I don't know, uh, maybe no, I wanna no, get no, to no. that point in my life. I feel like he had a lot of money <laughs> yes. when he was making this song. Yeah, he did. I agree, I agree 100%. Everybody <laughs> yeah. don't make that song. Oh, no, that you. song comes on, you wanna dance, you feel happy, is yeah, like, that all of a sudden? That, that, yeah, that's that's the song you make when you got that 40 to 50 meal. Yeah. That's that 40 to 50 mm, meal yeah. song. He was you know. definitely wearing some designer clothing when he <laughs> oh, yeah, made yeah, that song. Yeah, 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 he wasn't a but nerd no more. what song would you say that you have that would make someone feel good? I have a... And give me a little bit of it if you don't mind. Um, a song called uh, Overdose. Mm. It's, it's, okay. It's, <laughs> called, like, it's Overdosing on like a it. Female. Okay. But it's like, I overdose, I overdose, I overdose on you. Coming me up, what the is up? Let me you rough, <laughs> tell the morning come. Yeah. Your vibe is amazing. Yeah. You got a vibe and I like it. Let's throw a party and keep this shit private. Nobody else is invited. Like it's a dope real. So it like goes like fact, high. I like low. the fact that you can you can sing a little bit and then rap. you rap a little bit with it. It's I the like mic. that. I can like uh like you said, the power of the mic. Yeah. Like you could do music is like there's no limit. Like I don't like I feel like I was about to say, how do you feel when you rap? Like, you know, some people feel like I just put on like a super cave cape and I'm just like, you know, I just untouchable. I feel like I'm supposed, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know. Like rapping is different than me trying to sing. I've I've gotten more confident in my low tone, like my, my rapper voice recently, because all my like people I've been working with, they want me to just keep this raspy low tone. They're yeah, like, I, like I fell in love with auto tune when I, I first started singing and I'm I just like it. now like I don't even use it anymore. Yeah, you don't and, need it. Um, that's where I feel like I'm more powerful when I rap. So you like the rapping part more mm-hmm. than you singing. Yeah. Have you ever done um, vocal coaching? No, but but Ricky's about to get me into some vocal coaching. Uh, I'm open to it. I yeah, mean, we had like a anything. vocal coach came on here recently and she is so dope. She really? does a, She has worked she with so many. She linked with them. Yeah, she has done. I wonder if that's who you're gonna yeah, end she up working with. with. Probably. Yeah, that's, but uh, she is so dope. Yeah. I love her because she sings opera. Mm-hmm. So she was in here singing that really, really high pitch in a different language <laughs> opera. Yeah. And then when she sang like really smooth, it like I think I'm wondering if she's she I think she's the first female on here that when they when she sang for me, I could feel it in my chest. You mm-hmm. ever hear somebody sing and you can feel can, it like in here? I can sing. She can sing, sing. No, no, yeah. old girl, she old can, girl can sing. She too. Art, yeah. Art did a good job. I know, but I didn't that feel last it. Song that I didn't she feel it in here. But with her, yeah, I felt something yeah, yeah, yeah. in here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Power. Man. I mean, it's it's definitely. Uh, uh, it, it, you can tell that she's very experienced yeah. in what she did. But you know, um, Austin, what about that song, Toxic? Yeah, that's a. Uh, that's a hit. I like that's it. all I ask. Like that is a hit because like, yeah. it. I'm spelling it out for you, and then it's it's my that was my life for a very long time with somebody I really do care about, but we were just so bad for each other, yeah. and we were stuck like stuck in this cycle of like uh, 
hurting each other. And so it's kind of, I don't know. You're so bad for me, but I can't let go. Like, yeah. it's nothing, that song is so easy to remember. Like my son was walking around singing that the other day and I'm, I just feel like that song has a lot of potential. And yeah. uh, who, who would you, like, like that, that, how long, how was the process of it? How long did it take you to write it? An hour. An hour. Yeah, I think I recorded that one at uh, Music Access, the place that I signed to. Uh, it's the label, and they uh, their studio is like really nice, like top of the line. And so I uh, just went in there one day, and it was after I probably fought with this girl I was with, and it just was like T O X I C baby, mm. and I just started playing with like the highlights in my voice, mm -hmm. and I was going higher and higher and higher and higher, and I was like, oh wow. And then I think it was Keys came in there and was like, what? Wow. And they were all just in there like, whoa. I guess uh, this dude named Stay Down Lil B, he's been rapping in Dallas for a long time, but he's got a real low voice. And he's like, you gonna make it, bro. That's <laughs> <laughs> lit, that's like, lit. Yeah. How does it feel when people tell you things like that? Like you gonna make it and, and you know where all the work that you put in. I try not to get jaded on it. Cause now recently I feel like I've gotten to the point to where it's, I have to keep certain people at a distance and I'm, I can't be as naive and optimistic that everybody has my best interest. So I try not to like get too close, but when people say that it, it feels good, it's, it's reaffirming, but I, you, nothing good comes out of somebody telling you you're going to make it. You either get complacent or you, they're either like, it's just, I don't think that that's going to be like, you'll get stuck like that. I don't know yeah. for a I long time. I think you should use your basketball um, lessons mm -hmm. to teach you how to not get complacent with this because that's what you did with basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did it so much and people, I'm sure people were telling you, oh my God, you're so good, you're gonna make it, this, this. So it's the same thing I'm seeing. I think it's different with this because I feel like I did this by myself and I feel like my soul is tied into this. Okay. I could have a million dollars, I would make music every day. I could have zero dollars, I'm gonna make music every day. It's my Love therapy. It. It I found that. it through depression, like I was depressed. I was gonna ask you about that because I, I, I know that a lot of times it's like music is something that pretty much helps you to thrive and go through situations. Mm -hmm. it, it causes you to have certain mood swing. Moods, it swings you into the right place mm -hmm. or it could swing you into the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> that depression that you talk about, let's talk about uh, that a little bit. Like what, was it because of what went on with you and the, when, with the baby, with the, the baby. mom, the mom and the baby? I, I felt like that's where it was coming from. Um, it just And the parents, cause all this stuff is like a big world. Yeah, man, it's just a lot. You're this prodigy kid and you find out your senior year of high school that you're having a kid. Wow, dope. Not dope at the no, time. No, no, no. It was not I'm dope. I'm telling you yeah. that it's, I, I, I tell you like this, and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get out of it because he passed away the other day. Um, uh, well, the, about a few months ago, my first cousin, Kevin, he used to come up here and he was 17 and he used to tell mm. me this girl that he's coming up here seeing, she wanna have a baby. He said, she want to have a baby. He, I'm like, what? At 17? At and 17. she wanted and to she, have a baby. And he like, and I'm going to give it to her. I'm like, no, nah, man, don't do it, bro. It's not worth it. And he was happy about this. And, he, and I thought it was the most ridiculous thing in the were world. smart. She had a scholarship to, I don't remember what university it was. So they had, I mean, they were going to be soaring. Exactly. And he was. Wow. And so, Sorry to hear about that. No, no, no. Lost no. I'm going I'm 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 to finish the story up because that was the whole mm -hmm. deal of it. I couldn't understand it. But at the end, God showed it to me because when he he, he was in a car wreck and it ripped his uh, jaw halfway off and, and it, he was asleep. He was going to, uh, going to, to work. work. He worked in the oil field. And uh, he lived for about 10, 10 years after that. He was but just, he was in a nursing he, home. Yeah, he was brain dead. A vegetable. So the That's thing, sad. the thing I say is, at the time when he was saying this, I couldn't understand why. But after that happened, I understood totally why. Because now because he now a he has a son here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His son is is here and and that's what life is about right. life is about leaving it leaving something to the next generation uh -huh. when i pass on my son my son's son and all that so i think i understood fully at that point but mm -hmm. exactly but at the too. time he told me this i thought he was i'm older than it him. creates a like i don't know like when, when i found out i was having my kid like it's the worst thing in the entire world and i'm like how do you I'm a kid, like I was a kid, like I was like, and this is all happening, I'm about to leave for college, I had to be at summer workouts two days after he was born. 
So I'm Were like, Were you there when he was born? Yeah, I was okay. there. I got to hold him. So I got real attached to this baby and then had to get on a plane to what go to Columbus. What did your parents say when you told them that <sighs> you were having a baby for the My first time? My dad was like, She's lying. She's not telling the truth at first. And then I'm like, Dad, she's not lying. Like, she's <laughs> pregnant. He was just kind of like in denial. And then, I don't know, they were a lot better than I thought they would be about it. And everything's turned out so perfect. My son is like, the coolest kid in the world and the nicest good-hearted kid and I'm like blessed because there's people who would do anything to have a kid and they can't yeah, yeah. and that's what's crazy to me like one of my coaches in high school his daughter they were struggling to have a baby and I'm like the last thing I wanted was a baby and I have like a healthy out. kid mm -hmm. I think God already has a plan written out, and I think so many times we're so caught up in our own mm -hmm. thinking and our own way that mm -hmm. we don't understand. That's, that's why. True. That's why the Kevin's child, I understood at the end. That's yes. why you you got a dope son now because you don't know what God has for you. Mm -hmm. You have to just walk in the midst of life until you get where God yeah. wants you to be. Yeah, yeah. it's and already written, what? man. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is your why. Yeah. <laughs> that child is your oh. why in what you do now. If he was not there. You don't know if you would be doing what you're doing right now. I wouldn't. I would have probably. I see a lot of kids that I play basketball with trying to make it in basketball and trying to do something in basketball, and I'm like so thankful that I'm that I don't have to go through that anymore. I guess. And it like I watch I watch the basketball now, like I watch the playoffs and stuff, but I'm not into it as much at all because like time is really precious for me and like me and my son's time and I don't know it's just weird but so when I was away from him this is how I started like making music I just I went through depression because I was away from him in Chicago mm. and uh I moved him and his mom to Chicago and we were both young she was 18 I think I was 19 and we had a like a high-rise apartment in the middle of Chicago that the school paid for because I was on scholarship everything was good he was like two and then like a month or two into it she was like it's too hard and she was she got upset she, she was going through a lot and she, she left and took the baby and uh that's where it all kind of kicked in and um i stopped caring about basketball i yeah. stopped caring about school just didn't care I, they got me like with uh, a psychiatrist therapist did you start doing drugs or no uh yeah they had me on antidepressants and which I don't consider drugs, but right. like I've taken, I've been on Adderall since I was younger, like yeah, just yeah. kind of ADHD, hyper. <laughs> very hyper. And so, but I started smoking weed, which I still do, but yeah. mm -hmm. when you start smoking weed a lot, you don't really care. No, you don't. You have, it, it numbs everything. Exactly. Which at the time I felt like I needed was that. And yeah, yeah. That's when I just kind of started living. I think that's when it really switched in my head. Even though I wasn't that good at music, I started living like a like a musician, I'm a, a rock rapper. star now. I'm a like, rock star. I'm a like, rock star. Because people feel yeah. like it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because people feel like to be a rapper or a musician that comes with a lifestyle, smoking weed and doing this. But who did we um, talk to the other day that he said he doesn't even perform? with you know do weed or anything like that before he performs he has to be clear-headed yeah, yeah, yeah when I, he performs i get that though like i did i did a show the other day and i drank a little bit with my friends before and i like was on stage and i was like i wish i would wouldn't have drank like i wanted to be more locked in I, like right. you're not up there to act like an ass like exactly you know, i just think that there, there's still a a lot to learn. Yeah, a lot to learn. Because you're still young. Yeah, so right. young. Well, I mean, uh, um, the thing that comes to mind is that you have to just uh, lock in with the team that, that you have and, right. and, and really go through the things that it takes to be a good a good, a, a teammate, just mm -hmm. like in basketball, but pe play your position, yeah, yeah, yeah. play in your position. In, in the music, the same mm -hmm. way, it's the same thing. It, like you said earlier, babe. So you know, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to make it for so long while playing college basketball that I've tried to wear every hat. Yeah, like I was. Like I said I was AG three or three. I have like two albums done by that name that I produced every beat for. Wow. And I mixed myself, and That's, like some of those songs on there are really good. But it's you can bring it out later on. Yeah, later on, and yeah. I'll be able or to remix it. Like I have three thousand to four thousand songs in my mm -hmm. phone right now because my first like month at audio heaven that dude named keys who's like i talk to every day now mm -hmm. he's almost like it's like a father figure in music for me he uh 
her tightrope and he's like that's really the only song you got though because like these other songs i didn't want to show him because i recorded them in my bedroom and i didn't mm. i wasn't confident in them so i made like 2000 songs within probably like a year span like just wow. every single day just non-stop non-stop and now he's like now we're trying to cut songs out like we don't know what songs to use and uh yeah so i just i, I think like that Kobe mentality almost with yeah, music. Yeah, I mean, working hard. Like, yeah. that's a lot of music. But it's fun. It's, yeah, you enjoy it. Like you yeah. said earlier, you do it for free. Yeah. You do it for money, you do it for uh -huh. free, you do it, it because matter. it's life. Mm -hmm. So how, how much does your son impact on what kind of music you write and put out? More now than I thought, like, now he really listens to my music. Because when you said earlier that he be singing your lyrics, that's mm -hmm. when I'm, I'm like, I bet you, you, you know, be careful because you know. But you I don't also do as wrong. I do what I say, not like, like, what is that saying? Do. Do as I say, not what I do. No, do what you're told, not yes. what I say type thing. Like, I, I'll be able to explain everything to him. Like, I'm not going to lie to my son that I've had problems and substance issues. Like, I wouldn't lie to him about Man, that. Man, and not only that. Um, it's a lesson. It's something that you're creating right now that, that like, I've had to, uh, I've had to do uh, the, the things that, that really, uh, um, my daughter, I, I don't want to go too much in detail, but mm -hmm. my kids, my son, they went through things like I went through. Mm -hmm. um, I told them, you know, I, I never married their mother. This is before I met my wife. But I would always express to them that I, you know, I didn't give you a good map to follow. And that's what ends up happening like with you not being with the mother and you know all the stuff you go through you have to explain this to your children when they do get of age and can understand right. it that just because i done that and i gave up on something mm -hmm. you don't have to give mm -hmm. up you know mm -hmm. and this stuff is these are conversations that you end up having to have yeah. i'm having them now yeah uh more so because of what our family face sometime but these are things that was always embedded because of me because yeah. i did the things that caused these dysfunctionalities now i got to step up to the plate as a man and be realistic about what i done and fess up to it so we can do better mm -hmm. not only for me but for my grandkids and my grandkids grandkids mm -hmm. so it's it gets deep i know yeah, yeah. no i agree though it's it's real like that's I don't know. You couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> you really couldn't have. I'm like sitting like, wow. Oh it just keeps going because yeah. of, of what we're creating. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, we got to be true to who we are so we can help our the people that we love. It's all about communication, though. Correct. Like my son being able to come to me and tell me anything, anything. in the world. And that's something my wife said a lot. Like I wanted my daughter to be able to, and I didn't get it at first as much as I get it now because she said she had communication issues with her mother and her parents but i understand more why she say that because you do want them to be able to come to you and be approachable yeah because you love your kids more than anybody else in this world mm -hmm. and if your child don't feel comfortable in coming to you and telling you everything they're going to go to somebody else and you don't know how that right. person is advising them whether they're grown or not because sometimes they go to their friends for advice and their advice their their, their kids as well exactly. they don't know and anything life is weird and life is right hard. right and at the same time when you're at, when i'm advising my kids i always let them know i'm going to tell you this but i know it's your decision right anyway exactly so you have to make your own decision i can just tell you how i feel i'll open your eyes to look at not just one way but look at it multiple ways mm -hmm. And then you still have to make a decision because at the end of the day, when you leave this house, I'm not here all the time. God might, God is going to take me one yeah. day. Yeah. And you have to, because I've seen friends who shelter their kids shelter. so much. And their kids go buck wild in they, they don't know how to handle anything. <laughs> they, go <buck laughs> they don't know how to Sorry, handle girl. situations. Why, hey, hey, what happened down there in that college? <laughs> yeah. They go buck wild. Buck like wild. They, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to handle certain no, situations. That freedom. And I talk to I talk to my my daughters about everything. You know what I mean? Uh, street life, meaning like, you know, when you go out, don't take drinks from strangers. Mm -hmm. Don't because I know that even if you don't drink now, when you get out there to college, all sorts of stuff happen. Whatever. And what, I know when people, everyone else is drinking, and somebody might try to slip something oh, in your will. drink sure, and all of that sort of stuff. There. Yeah. So weird, yeah. you have to educate your kids on these things. Yep. Yeah, but let, let, let's get back to the music. Boy, this thing here. <laughs> yeah, we, way. Man, we, we, we straight about the kids. Let's talk about options three. Is that is that it? No, no, no. It's well, options. Options? Uh, I, it's probably it's three on there because uh, the BC mix. sent it to me. It's probably the mix. Uh, okay. That song is fire. Okay. That's all I can say is it's fire. I listen to it. I, it's I like it. It's, well, it's um, like, I just like the tone of that song. It's kind of like. 
Well, who did you work with engineering and uh, producing that song? Keys made the beat on that song. Okay, you work with Keys you a, do lot. a lot. That's my, like, yeah, that's my guy. Uh, he's on my phone every day trying to make, we, even if I, today I don't feel like doing something, he's going to call me and be like, this, this, this. Like, he's just always plotting and thinking and that's trying dope. to move forward and having somebody like that with you who's that's lit. that same deli delusional confidence that, Shit, I feel like I can. When I'm with Keys, I feel like I can do anything. Like yeah, he's just, uh, he's that type of dude, and he's been doing this a long time. So I, that's how, that's how Keys. hits are made, right there. Yeah, that's how hits are made. And man. he made my lap, my first drop that half past three. He made that beat. Yeah. And then now I'm getting into like that we're half building past a team. Three, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, that's a good song too. I like yeah. that one a lot. It's a. Uh, those I'm trying to do these hip hop songs. That was a collab, songs. wasn't it? No, no, no. That was. Uh, I have some collabs on my uh, page that okay. I did the Audio Heaven. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know that one. That was a uh, dance for dance me. for, dance me, for yeah. me was a collab with Black Jose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that has uh, uh, three. Mm -hmm. That's like the only thing that you really pushed out there mm -hmm. We're right about now. To, yeah, we have uh, an album done. Bipolar Gemini is what it's called, and it's. A list. Of, it's like probably twelve to fifteen songs, but they're all different. There's pop. There's R&B, there's straight rap, hip hop. It's a lot of stuff on there uh, that we're putting together right now that should be out in the next couple of months. But okay. my next drops are probably going to be uh, Toxic, um, Rockstar by Papa Ace, and Options. Man. In that order? Oh, um, no. I don't know. <laughs> Options first because we've been working on the video. And, and when is that coming out? That'll come out in uh, July, sometime in July. Okay. I think we'll get options and toxic dropped in july and then we're gonna do the video for uh rock star so that should be out by like august september because it's kind of a darker song anyways mm. with the dj from dallas named papa ace papa ace yeah he's he's really good yeah yeah he I produces too i know you keep mention you mention your old name that you used to go by why you switched the name and when did you switch your name to austin grand mm. uh keys once again i like that he name. met me at uh like austin grand. audio heaven he's like what the it's AG 303. What is that? Where did you get that name from? I don't anyway? know. Who gave it to I, you? Myself. I was, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was in there smoking. No, he was high. He was high. He was like, AG, what is it? AG 303 in the building. And then I looked it up on Google and it means like uh, clarity. And I'm like, okay, so I use okay. my music to find clarity. Yeah. But yeah. It's just AG Austin three. Grand. It's, it's just way it, better. It Austin Grand sounds so much like, a, like a star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds so much. Is, and that is your. That's my. That's like my business artist name okay, everything so where so did like, he get that name from my last my name's austin grand staff mm -hmm. just take the staff off of it that's okay. dope austin man grand. that's dope man yeah no yeah, i we don't can't keep a staff in there it wouldn't no sound. it would be <laughs> too long no, too long. no austin grand is it that's the one well, it's me i think i've just keys has helped me like develop develop me into this artist it's like having somebody else believe in you on that level it can push you push yeah. you push you like yeah. they make me go so much harder now rick it's doing so much for me and beast it's just the team it's yeah. all that a team working is always i got awesome. a hell of a team man mm -hmm. i love it man team. i'm watching everything that's going on yeah. i can't wait to see the and development then as you move on forward and you meet uh, more seasoned artists and stuff mm -hmm. like that you definitely have to network with them get their information ask questions don't be scared to ask questions because some people when they meet certain people they're they're shy. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say. Or they want to look cool. Almost. They want to look cool. Yeah. So it's not the time for because that. there's so many I'm, people. Yeah. Cause we also interview seasoned artists, people who've mm -hmm. been around for decades. Yeah. And one thing we always ask, why you know, do you um, mentor the younger yeah. ones that are coming up? And yeah. a lot of them say they do. Mm -hmm. So it's just that some people don't ask. Or if they did ask, they don't take the advice that they're given right. and they go in the wrong way. Cause you gotta realize a lot of these seasoned artists, especially where paperwork and business and stuff is concerned, they know a lot of it because they went the wrong way and they mm -hmm. learned from it. So they could save you a lot of time right. and effort by telling you, okay, don't sign here, don't do this, do that. You right, know, make yeah. sure you look at this. Mm -hmm. So definitely you want to always ask anybody you come along with. Mm -hmm. The music business is scary for mm -hmm. sure. So that's why I'm trying to keep this circle I have of people like tight, yeah. like yeah. especially when it comes to me on paperwork and stuff, because right now I'm with one label. I have one manager that I'm signed to and I trust them. Like I, I do, I really like them and I think they're good people. They've, I worked, like did songs at that studio before I even signed 
and like they gave me like a month to like decide if I even want to sign the contract. They just gave me time. What was the um what what's the name of the group? Music yeah. Access. Music Access. Yeah. That's and who Rick's you sound the to. head of the A and R uh, for the urban department there. I think Dolph and uh, Chad Boy Freddie did a song. Yeah. Uh, that they pushed and stuff. That, I like that song. Yeah, it's called Trap. I think. Yeah, yeah, that song was dope. And so, um, I got to know them and stuff. And Rick's just seen me come a long way since I started there. And he's heard a lot of music. Like I'll be in there making a song, and they'll come in there. It's just I don't know. I have a way of putting a song together when I'm running my own session that I yeah. kind of developed when I was in college, and I just kind of mastered it. So. Wow. I so. noticed you say about all your songs every time whenever we um, ask you about a song, you say that it's fire. It is. Like I don't, all, I don't miss like all. So <laughs> if you had to name one song that you love the most out of all songs that you have. Uh, this song called Celebrate that I made like two days ago. I ain't heard it. It, I, it, it ain't even out yet. No, it's I not. can't even get that one. Okay, can you now. give us a, a sneak peek of it? Yeah, here. Yeah. Are we going to sing it a little bit? Yo, I can, I can, I, you got a number I can text it to? Oh, oh. I, can, I can sing it. Is uh, <laughs> um, My life is a party. Can we celebrate? It's a celebration. No, what is it called? You can I'm send it. I'm a tone setter. <laughs> I know I say I'm a tone you setter. Hit his chick. I'm a so home new, record. right? Yeah, it, like two days ago. And I can freestyled. you email it to me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, all right. And, and I'm a, it's I mean, Boss Talk Podcast 101 at gmail.com. Cool. I got my boy on. He has a little verse I'm gonna, on Are we going to play oh, a really? little bit That's of cool. Have you done a song for him as yet? For who? He talking, for he talking about his homeboy. Oh, no, not my not, son. No. I know, yeah, but have you done a song Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working on it. Yeah. Oh no, 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 not really. Like talking about him or nothing like in that. In the past, I did. You did. Mm -hmm. Boss talk podcast one hundred and one at gmail dot com. Get at us. <laughs> you talking about this is a feel great, feel good song? I I'm think. about to put it on. I'm about to. We gonna see. You know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you sound like you know what you're talking about, but that, that, hey, that we gonna see. Let's celebrate with the eight. Okay, celebrate with the eight. Ricky Let's called go. me after I sent it to him and said, that song is insane. Did he? Yeah, and that is your favorite song? Right now, yeah. Right now. This like, is newest song. See, so Every one of them. As you write, <laughs> he as you write the newest one is always your favorite one? No, 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 no. There's certain songs like, people will send me songs and I'm like, you have to show me the song in person. I don't even listen to my own music sometimes because I make it. <laughs> 101 at Gmail. Boss Talk Podcast. Hey. That's dope. Boss Talk. Who came yeah. up with the name? That's me right there, That's man. You. you know, right? Yeah. And then my son put the 101 on it, my oldest son. Because I was like, man, we can't just do Boss Talk. We got to have something yeah. to make us look different. I wanted to hear the 101 part because I know that the radio station be 106 or mm -hmm. 199. I'm like, I'm going to put yeah. 101 on it. And we didn't thing. do 101.1? No, nah, I should have <laughs> did that. That would have made it even more catchy. They'd be like, what radio yeah. station is that? I should have did that. But 101 is dope. God knows what he's doing. Uh -huh. I guess so sent I, get I sent it to the email. Okay, let's right. go. Let's see where we at with it. Let's go. Yeah, what, but but what did you, you when you first heard it? You was like, "Wow, man, where am I going? What the uh, hell am I going?" Boss talk. I'm a boss. Hey, <laughs> boy, the boss is talk. That's what Ronnie yeah. say. Boss talk podcast. Boss, boss talk one hundred and one. Where the boss is talk. Real CEO. Yeah, <laughs> man. E CEO in the building. I got your other stuff. I got options. I got rock star. I got toxic. You got. You got. A few songs. It's a celebration for whoever hating. I'm on the road, I'm destined for greatness. Hey. Gotta go get it, gotta go chase it. Run up the digits, watch where yeah, I take it. Them. Just, just go ahead and run. Unique hustle. Man, that's it right <laughs> it's there. Unique hustle. It's a unique hustle. What'd you think about my intro song, man? man. I liked it. I liked that song. <laughs> that's yeah. XO, Who is man. That? That's XO. Oh, it she is? She go hard, man. Uh, yeah. She's I got another one too. Tell me what you think about it. I have XO on Instagram. Boss talk. That's Boss Talk. I it and I stand on them shooters on my side. That's on command, homie. Ain't nothing but some Boss Talk. It's hot there. I can get my hands on it. I heard the word on the street. It's a demand on it. Yeah. I like that one too. That's hard, bro. <laughs> that's fire. Who's that? Oh, no, oh, that's my guy, PGF. Shout out Atlanta. Out of ATL. He came, man. He come like a movement. Yeah. When that boy showed up here last week, he brought that song and everything. Shirts. Uh -huh. He came with about five, three camera guys. Yeah. He, 
yeah, that boy came deep, man. He came here, blessed our game. When you come back, that's how you gonna do it. Once right. You, yeah. Right once now, you, I've been moving yeah. dolo because I'm kind of like. Yeah. Once you come, once you come with know. it, though, it's gonna yeah, be a time you gonna be, be like, E, I'm coming, and we gonna rock, rock over there. Out. Yeah. <laughs> a whole different vibe. <laughs> I did it, man. So you know, uh, yeah, that that's that's my boy shout and EXO, but EXO follows. So yeah, we, is, we're supposed she, to make a song you, for real. Oh, yeah, me and EXO, cool. yeah. Uh, she wants to get on this song called Automatic that I have. It's, man, uh, she dope. She you is lyrically dope. Yeah, she's cool too. She's really yeah, cool. She's yeah, talented. She's a real yeah. cool person. Chill girl. Yeah, she's cool. Man, I love fire. to see that come out. Make, make that happen, everyone. man. Make yeah. that happen. I let oh Austin I just it just came yeah, through. Yeah, I can't do it. This is crazy. I think you go ahead and play it though. Playing? Yeah, that's it. I got some lean in my body. Crit full of bodies. My life is a party. Can we celebrate? It's a celebration for whoever hates it. I'm on the road, I'm dusting for greatness. Gotta go get it, gotta go chase it. Run up the digits, watch where I take it. Watch where I take it. Watch where I take it. Watch where I take it, watch where I take it. I like watch where I take it bitch. What? Uh. I'm a tone setter, took his bitch, I'm a home wrecker. Tone setter, took his bitch, I'm a home wrecker. No pressure, bitch, I only get better. No pressure, bitch, I only get better. I got some lean in my body. Man, you know. Can we celebrate? What is what, what is what made what made you write that? Can we celebrate? It was Just my birthday. Everybody and my, to jump up. my my birthday really it was my birthday, and the chick I was talking to like told went off on me on my birthday, like was mean to me on my birthday. And I'm like, can I celebrate? Like, please. <laughs> right. And did you actually have lean in your body? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I mean, no cap. No, no cap. cap. That's no. good. That's good. And yeah. a crib full of thotties. Hey. <laughs> Sure yeah. yeah, I like that, man. Yeah, man. The, hey, man. You, hey, hey. Once it hit, it's gonna be crazy. It's a life changing thing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that definitely is a great song. Loved it. Um, so top three artists of all time. Dead or alive. alive. Any genre. And any genre. Any genre. Top three artists of all time. Number one. Elvis Presley. Okay. Hey. That's the first Elvis Presley. Boom. That's what I grew up listening to. My, my grandma's favorite artist, too. Really? So I'd say, I would go Elvis Presley. Number two. Oh, man. Y'all are putting some pressure on me. I got Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lil Wayne? Lil okay. Wayne. And then I would dope, say... Dope. Top three. Number three. I'm missing some... Uh, people are going to be mad. I'd probably say, honestly, honestly. Drake. So I figured that was. You can never say little Wayne and Drake. Drake. Think about Drake. Right? That whole movement. That whole movement. Then, like, is I crazy. my honorable mentions like so what Slim to Shady and like that. Yeah. Because you, when you say those two, you have Nikki. to say Nikki as well. Nikki went hard on the boys. I ain't gonna lie. She did. She but she jumped in there and swung at them boys' yeah. neck, man. Well, mm-hmm. oh, she would if you put her on a song, she's coming like it's over with. hundred miles per hour. She's amazing. But I'm saying like that inspired me. Yeah. Those those, those three probably. Like, so the, the Elvis's the, swag Elvis was Presley. just yeah. Immaculate. Little Wayne and Drake. Mm-hmm. That's my boy Austin Grant's top three. Man. Yeah. So um definitely um love you. We love what you do. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. It's going y'all. down, man. And whenever you have something new you want to pop in, mm-hmm. hey, hit me up, man. 100%. I'm gonna give you I'm, you're gonna follow me direct yeah, too. Yeah. That way we can we can link up whenever. Man. And um yeah, man, I, cause I wanna know like yeah, real time. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, for <laughs> like, sure. Oh, it's going it's down. Like, yeah, family, bro. yeah, family. yeah, yeah. So thank you for coming on the show, for man. Sure, bro. Say, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Yeah. And we out. Man.